What's up with it? I'm Slink Johnson. I'm Soren Baker, y'all. And you're watching The Gray Area. So today we're going to be talking about these windows, man. And, and Slink, we talk about this sometimes too, man. It's like dudes have these big flashes where they come out and like are super popular and then they just kind of disappear or they have a real short window of time where they're like the man. So let's take it back to the old school, man. Like I know this some this is a group that we both liked that had a real short run but was incredible, was three times dope. Oh, <laughs> EST, the Act Nicholas one, uh, man. And I will be absolutely honest with you, Soren, and tell yes. you, I couldn't tell you any other song on their album other than Greatest Man Alive, Funky, and funky dividends, <laughs> but however, those two songs made such an impact for me at that time of my life. I'm talking about the golden era of hip hop, man. right? And these guys' voices were definitely being heard at that time. Yeah, man. I even I couldn't have done it, but I was trying to get the, you know. Yeah, EST had the <laughs> illest. He had the, the side illest pro. side flat top that was so ill. Yeah, and like the and sloped and Gumby or what? Yes, the sloped Gumby, and it was. EST, the act Nicholas one, Ow. the greatest man alive, and I believed it. Yeah, I man. believed it. EST at that one time, again, it was a 88, 89. It was, yeah, right in the 89, 90. But the craziest thing is, when you saw that video and he had the, uh, he had the reporter, remember, and he had the lady all dressed up and stuff, like, it was like... 88. 88, 89. 88. Yeah. And at 88, I was, I was a young kid, young teenager, Hip hop had was was had gotten his legs by the end. Eighty eight, right. I say it really started getting his legs. Like hip hop was here, you knew it was here, and at that time, three times dope dropped those two songs for me, man. And they were phenomenal. They were groundbreaking. Funky dividend. <laughs> I was about to say slink, slink, man. Funky dividends, cause the, to me. The crazy thing was when he had the girl interaction coming on and then she was bringing up Steady B, right, she right. was bringing up the, the rest of the Hilltop Hustlers, I was just like, yo, this is ingenious and it's hilarious. She's dissing him on his own song talking. It was so <laughs> dope of him to do that and yeah. for them to make that song like that. And you know, Funky Dividends was touching on gold diggers way right. before the term was was was, yeah. was prevalent in hip-hop the right. word gold digger is an old word but way before it was prevalent in hip-hop yeah. uh three times dope definitely addressed them and they they let it be known man and then they even like brought it back later with the girls talking about this stuff later with steady b and some of the other songs that they had going man when i was with steady b yeah. i had it all this steady b was robbing banks <laughs> That nigga probably doing all kinds of shit. Of course you had it all, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here working. Bitch, I'm at Subway in the daytime, and at nighttime, I'm, I'm cleaning up the factory, bitch. And you talking about some Chanel? Bitch, you better put on them pro kids. I'm gonna take your punk ass down there to pay less, bitch. What Get some even... kangaroos. Yes, at least they got a pocket in them. Yeah. What have you done to deserve Chanel, Louis, Gucci? And this is 88, 89. 88, 89. Who had that money? Well, you know, Dapper Dan was making Gucci suits uh, for a very, very player price. <laughs> the uh, friendly Gucci. Yes, and man. also, uh, another group that I, I slink, man, I thought this group was going to be huge, down with the native tongues, incredible, black sheep. Black man. sheep. Dude. My man dress. Dude, A Wolf in Sheep's Clothing, mm -hmm. I think, is one of the best rap albums ever made. They had so many singles, and they also helped not really introduced, but they helped really pioneer the singles with the remixes, with the Strobe Light Honey wow. remix. But then of course, The Choice Is Yours, that was like the biggest song probably for a year. And like just that song, and they kept coming out with singles. And I was just like, yo, Drez, Mr. Long, they're gonna be it. You know, they're coming from Native Tongues, they're down with Tribe, they're down with Dayla, down with Jungle Brothers. Well, you know, unfortunately for, for, for Black Sheep, they came towards what what I, what I like to call the end of conscious rap. Right. The end of that era when, you know, more um, urban or reality of gangster rap, street rap started being pushed in your face, you know, at that time. Everybody and, wanted to be and they oh, And that was the funny thing that you say that, because they opened up the album with the dream, and he, he was dreaming he was a gangster rapper, and he woke up, he's like, I, was, I dreamt I was hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he, so they even addressed it. And them dudes actually were very, very talented, very, very real street niggas. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people got the, you know, think about the De La Soul area, the De, De La Soul era, right. the Daisy Age. Right. You know, and people say, you know, some people may look back on it now, so these dudes had flowers and De La Soul, some real niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Black sheep is some real niggas that will stomp your ass out, but they just in tune with their blackness. You know what I'm saying? So ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, man. And um, I remember, too, they brought out, uh, uh, because of their success, with the Wolf and Sheep's clothing, man, they brought out the group, the Legion. Remember mm. them? And they were super hard. And I was like, man, Black Sheep has got this going. And, and they're, I was like, these dudes are gonna be like doing big things, man. And it was just so disappointing to see that it just didn't really happen like that, man. But you know, it was nice to see what they did with their window. Again, Black Sheep, as we discussed earlier off camera, Black Sheep is another one of those groups who definitely made uh, uh, their impact on hip hop, the culture, the right. music as a genre, and the culture as a whole. They definitely made their impact in that short amount of time. And they showed too, like, with the choice is yours. You remember the video, they were scrunching up the paper and they had like, mm. are you down with this or that? And they, you know, they would have the dude in the clan and then they would have like the beautiful girl. They would have like, you know, buffoonery and they would have something great going on. You can get with this or you can get with that. Yeah. You can get with this or you can get with that. Yeah, it was incredible, man. And then Strobe Light Honey, they had the whole thing about... That shit was dope. Yeah, it was like, you know, <laughs> trying to get with a girl, but you're at the club and you can't tell what's going on. And then you see her like, whoa, whoa, slow down. I met a few Strobe Light Honeys, but you know, I'm a real nigga. I just had to go ahead and go on with it, man. Fuck it, man. I, I know. I you haven't turned out nothing but your collar sling. I, I, know, I know that. Out, man. I know that. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> We're trying to make sure that people know that this happens in all eras. Mm -hmm. And somebody that did it recently, that had a big push, that was huge, that had a lot of momentum, Trinidad James Slink. Yeah, man, you know, the the the, the impact he made with the All Gold Everything single and that just that moment of time, Right. I just knew Trinidad was poised to be On one of those way. ones. I knew he was gonna be, although, you know, he's still doing work and all, he hasn't seen any success like he did with All Gold Everything, but, you know, he definitely made he definitely turned heads at that time and, yeah. you know, pointed pointed all eyes back to Atlanta and pointed all eyes to himself. Yeah, and, and to being, like, unabashedly Southern. Like, he was, like, making sure that people knew he was from the South and representing. And that, you know, I think as rap has gotten bigger, like, some of the artists, I would think, from the South have kind of toned that down a little bit, and he kind of, like, took it back, like, yo. I'm Unabashedly the gaudy out there yeah. in the front yard with no shirt on, with a gold chain that costs more than this block. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like to call it elegant ratchetivity. Yes, that's a good one, Slink. I like that. Yeah, because, you know, there is a certain amount of elegance that could be had with ratchetivity. Yeah, and I think too with uh, Trinidad, it, it begs the question since he was on Def Jam, it's like, yo, you have like the biggest single, you're on Def Jam, which is the most iconic label in rap history, and like you still didn't like sustain the success. So, Slink, from your perspective and what you know of him and his music and everything, is that because the music wasn't there, the label didn't know how to do him? Is it a combination of everything? Did he not have the talent? Like, what do you think? prohibited him from getting to the sustaining that career. Well, I would not at all say he didn't have the talent or he doesn't have the talent because he's definitely a talented dude. I agree. Especially in today's climate. Mm -hmm. You know, he's definitely a, a very talented dude, but I do believe that, you know, it just is a combination of all the other things. They weren't, you know, the label didn't know how to properly market or propel this guy right here. And I don't know anything about his work that work ethic, however, right. you know, I just think it was just a combination of things, you know, timing and, you know, mismanagement perhaps. I don't know, but shout out to Trinidad James. Yeah, because man. again, all gold everything. I was bumming the gold all of my chat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was my shit. And you weren't the only one, Slink. You no, know, everybody you know, was. I, I fucks with Trinidad. Yeah, man. And that's why we had to talk about it here on this Windows episode of the Gray Area. So Slink, man. We gotta make sure the people hit us up. Yeah, hit us up, man, in the comments below, man. Make sure you're watching the gray area. Like, share, and subscribe to Unique Access, and make sure you like the gray area. Hey, and tell us about some artists that you think had a cool little window, but it got closed on them real quick. Leave it right here in the comments and holler at your boy. I'm Slink Johnson. And I'm Soren Baker. And this is the gray area.